Hello everybody! In one of my previous videos I showed you how to replace igniter plugs on CFM 56-5B and if you haven't seen it yet the link is uh, up here or lately you can find it in the description below and today I would like to show you the same procedure but on our Pratt & Whitney 1127G which belongs to 320 and uh, here it's a bit more tricky because uh, Igniter plugs are exactly here. You have both of them hidden down here under all of these pipes. And uh, it is quite hard to get to it, but if you have proper tooling, which is this one, uh, it's quite easy. Uh, first of all, you need to remove the igniter lead with a craft food on the other one. And then you will use this awesome tool, but uh, more about it uh, during replacement. So let's go. And as always, I need to obey all safety precautions, uh, like uh, placing the warning notices in the cockpit to tell people to do not play with the engine, deactivate uh, ignition system by pulling CBs, deactivate sluts to prevent damage to the airplane, then I need to open fan coils, deactivate thrust reversers, open sea ducts and only then I can start work on the engine. And as a first step is uh, removal of the ignition lead. And since nut of igniter lead is quite hard to access, I recommend to use craft food extension ratchet. With this tool it will be really easy. Of course I need to inspect the cable if it is in good condition and if yes I'll protect it and uh, I'll start with removal of the igniter plug. And for that we must use this adapter. And why is that? Igniter plug is installed on the insert and if you will not use this adapter you can lose this insert. The igniter plug spacer thickness will need to be calculated again. Be sure that igniter adapter body properly sits on the diffuser case insert then hold it with a wrench which will use as a contra force against the losing of the igniter plug. This way you can be sure that diffuser case insert remain on position and I can remove igniter plug without further problems. Igniter plug is out and it still look quite good. And why are we actually replacing components which are still in good condition? And reason is prevention against misfire because there is always possibility of failure and we are trying to prevent that with the schedule replacement of the components. And of course I'll remove second igniter as well. So we'll do the same procedure. First of all we'll lose the nut of the igniter cable and when that one is loose I can try to remove the cable and maybe it doesn't look like that on the video but I really doesn't have that much room for my hands so it's sometimes a bit struggle on this engine but cable is out and it looks good so I can proceed with the removal of the igniter plug and of course I need to follow the same procedure which means that body of igniter adapter need to properly sit on a diffuser case insert very, very and only when I'm sure that that is okay I can remove igniter plug. As you can see second igniter is out and uh, this one looks as well quite good but uh, as I said this is only because of prevention. Uh, since I have uh, igniters out I can show you the cooling feature on them. Uh, as you can see they look similar like uh, CFM but the uh, holes are bigger and uh, how it works uh, only this top part is in the combustion chamber and this one is uh, in the cool cooling stream and yeah, through these holes we 
send the cold air to the combustion chamber so this section is cooled all the time but uh, igniter leads are not cooled like on the CFM which is main difference you can see the uh, the lead is quite thin but yeah most probably this uh, engine don't need it that was another fun fact and we can proceed with the installation and meanwhile I'll tell you another big difference between CFM and Pret & Whitney igniter plug we are not applying anti okay. cis compound on thread of uh, Pret & Whitney igniter plug the reason is that sure. threads are silver plated and have very tight tolerance to make sure that igniter plug fits correctly which means that if you will apply anti cis right. compound you can change the torque and cause damage to the insert. First igniter is on place and all that's remaining is to torque it and of course we need to follow the same procedure as during removal which means that we need to use adapter and hold insert properly on place meanwhile we are torquing the igniter. And since igniter plug is on place, we can proceed with the installation of a igniter cable. And of course we need to torque the nut to required volume, which you will of course find in your AMM. Igniter cable is supported all the way by the spring clips and after installation we need to engage cable back to these clips. So that's the bottom one now, the top one. First igniter plug is installed and we can proceed with the second one. And you must be able to install igniter plug only by hand. Otherwise you need to clean the thread of the insert by special tool. It's in. And we need to torque igniter plug, which means that we need to again use the adapter. And from this point you can actually see how everything fits on the place. Igniter number two. And here as well you can see how challenging is tight enough. The space is really horrible. But cable is on place so we can torque the nut. Good thing, okay, tight, installed, good. Both igniters are on a place so we can perform the test, but before we perform operational test of ignition system, we need to perform dry motoring, which will confirm that we will remove all residual fuel or vapors, which can be ignited so, during the fire test. test. And for crank, we will of course need a high pressure source, which means APU or ground car or the air engine, but uh, best option for us is APU of course. APU is on, which means that we have high pressure source. 
and we can perform dry crank which means that we will rotate engine without ignition and fuel yes we can okay three two one start After dry crank we are sure that there is no residual fuel in combustion chamber so we can prepare airplane for ignition test. And this is sound of igniter plug during start procedure. And of course we need to perform the same test for the other igniter plug. That was test of ignition system, and now all that's remaining is to return aircraft back to serviceable condition. That's more or less all about uh, replacement of igniter plugs on this engine. If you have any questions, as always, please write them down in the comments below. And also, I would like to again ask you to don't use this uh, as a replacement of the maintenance manual. Always use latest documentation and release my manufacturer. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš, this was a Craft Maintenance with Zeto and I will see you next one. Bye.